All right, so we get to look at one more problem of how we come up with a pool bed diagram. And this time we're going to look at copper for uh, the analysis. Copper has a relatively simple uh, reduction diagram. We go from copper 2 to copper 0. There is copper 1 as an intermediate, and we're going to have to see you know, how that may actually play a role in terms of the look of the diagram. But the one thing that I want to point out to you is that when it comes down to changing pH, you do change the um, the actual species that you have present in solution for both copper 2 and copper 1. Notice that copper 2 under acidic conditions it is simply the naked ion. But if you raise the pH above 7, you end up getting copper 2 oxide. And similarly for copper 1, copper 1 is expressing as a naked ion at pHs below 5.7 but above 5.7 you have copper 1 oxide as the actual identity of the species. So we're going to use each one of those reference points to, um, to tell you know what's going to be happening. So first things first, um, I'm going to take that metastable red box that we have for the copper 1 you know um, reaction and what I want to point out is that the upper portion still represents copper 2 going to copper 1 and the bottom portion represents copper 1 going to copper 0 so notice what I've done right here on the left side of the graph we have copper 2 going down to copper 1 and that takes a potential of 0.16 all right so I'm going to include all of that into the diagram so looking at the changes in the pH we have the following two pHs to keep track of, pH 7 for copper 2 and pH of 5.7 for copper 1. So I basically created those uh, two vertical lines to account for that. And also, in the horizontal realm, we have to keep track of the 0.34 potential for copper 2 to copper 0 and the 0.116 potential for copper 2 to copper 1. All right. Let's find out what ends up happening right here. So, uh, first things, yeah, so first things first. Looking at pH 7, this only pertains to copper 2. So, technically speaking, the only boundary that we're going to have here is going to be associated with copper 2. And the 5.7 is your copper 2 to copper 1 boundary. So, technically, it's only this thing that we are concerned with because that is the uh, change that will have you go from copper 2 to copper 1. All right, so now we start on the upper left portion, which we are guaranteed to have copper 2 plus. And for copper 2 plus, we have to examine a few things. We have to examine to what happens if we go from copper 2 plus directly down but below a pH of 5.7, in which case we will be going to copper 1. Or if we are above, um, you know, the pH of 5.7, we're going to be going from copper 2 plus to copper 2, oh, excuse me, copper 1 oxide. And the same thing goes for copper 2 oxide. That's going to be going down to copper 1 oxide. So we're going to analyze each one of those particular um, events. So the separation here on the upper portion of the graph is copper 2 or copper 2 oxide. Down here we have naked copper 1. And directly to this right, past the 5.7 pH boundary, we have copper 1 oxide. And at the very bottom, we have just neutral copper. All right, so we're going to analyze what happens to each one of the species. Remember that copper 2 can be reduced to copper 1 or copper 1 oxide. Copper 2 oxide is only going to be able to be reduced to copper 1 oxide because the boundary at which it starts, it's pH of 7. Copper, naked copper 1 doesn't appear until you reach a pH lower than 5.7, so these two will not be overlapping. All right, so let's start. Let's start right here. Copper 2 to copper 1, there is no oxygen present and there's no hydrogen present, so you will not have the need to use water to balance this reduction. And as a result, the potential will remain constant up until you hit the pH boundary that yields a new species for the individual copper atoms, right? 
So this upper portion and this lower portion will not require any protons or oxygens for the balancing and therefore the potential will remain constant since there will be no H plus component in the Nernst equation. Alright, so that means that now we need to look at the following process. Copper 2 turning into copper 1 oxide. To balance that equation, we have copper 2 on the left side, copper 1 oxide on the product side. This has one oxygen on the product side, so we add one water to the left side. That yields two protons. Oh, and by the way, you need to balance the coppers. You have to have two coppers on both sides. Uh, this balances um, the oxygens and the coppers, but now we have two hydrogens on the left side, so we need to add two protons to the product side. And in order to end up with the same charge on both sides, being two plus on the right side and four plus on the left side, we have to add two electrons to the left side of the equation. All right, so here, needless to say, we do have protons present, so we need to write a nurse equation for that process. And here we have it. We have a value of negative point, excuse me, positive 0.34, which is the boundary of the copper 2 to copper 1 oxide, minus 0 0.0592 divided by the value of n. Since we're dealing with two electrons, n equals 2. This is multiplied by the log of products of a reactants. The product is H plus square. Uh, copper 1 oxide doesn't actually make into the expression because it it's a solid. And on the reactant side, water doesn't make into the expression, uh, but copper 2 plus will because it's AQ, and that needs to be square as well. So notice that I'm squaring both of those uh, segments in the fraction um, as a you know single exponent. So what I'm going to do is pretty much account for the fact that anything other than H plus, I'm going to assume that has standard conditions, so the copper concentration will just be 1. So this is nothing more than the log of h plus to the second power. If you bring this exponent outside of the log, you'll have 2 times log of h plus, and the 2 in front of the log will cancel out the 2 in the denominator of the Nernst equation. So you'll end up with simply um, 0 0.0592 times the log of h plus. If you bring in the negative that's at the front of all of this, you'll have negative log of H plus times 0 0.0592. Therefore, you end up with positive 0 0.0592 times the pH. And so what this now tells you is that, okay, if you plug in the um, the pH, and here you have to keep in, in, in uh, mind that you're going from copper 2 to copper 2 oxide, right? Um, so we need to find out where this is going to be stopping ultimately. And specifically, we want to see what happens when you hit a pH of 7. And now the reason why you want to stop at a pH of 7 as opposed to 14 is because the identity of copper 2 plus changes the moment you go to pH 7. At pH 7, you no longer have copper 2. You now have copper 2 oxide. Notice that right here, I'm going only to a pH of 7 to account for the fact that, yes, you're going to be changing the identity of your species at that specific pH. Uh, now, when you plug in pH of 7 into the Nernst equation, you end up with an electrical potential of 0.75, which means that you can erase that segmental line, and starting at this point, you'll go down to 0.75, roughly speaking. Now, looking at the potentials, that actually takes you up here, right? Because you start at 0 0.34, 0 0.75 is actually up here. So this is going to go from the point at which the copper 2 boundary begins, but then it's going to go up to this point. And the reason this has a positive slope is simply because the protons are products in the reaction and not reactants like we had in the previous case for water. All right, so the picture is beginning to build itself. Right, now we need to examine what happens to copper 2 oxide turning into copper 1 oxide. And that equation has copper 2 oxide as a reactant, copper 2 oxide is the product. You have two coppers on the product side, so you have to multiply copper 2 oxide by 2. That now gives you two oxygens on the left side. You have only one on the right side, so you add one water. That now provides you with two protons on the product side, so you add two H pluses on the left side. And then you add two electrons to end up with neutral charges on both sides. Alright, so this equation has protons present in it, so you're going to end up with a Nernst equation that will change with the pH. 
All right, so out of everything that we have here, the only thing that actually makes into the expression is the H plus concentration because it's the only thing present in AQ symbol, right? Or the AQ state. So we're going to have log of 1 over H plus square. Number of electrons is 2 once again. So if you bring the exponent down, the 2 in front of the log will cancel out with the 2 in the denominator. You will have negative 0.0592 times the log of 1 over h plus and the log of 1 over h plus is the same thing as the negative log of h plus which is the pH so ultimately this equation sim you know simplifies to 0.75 minus 0 0.0592 times the pH all right and now what we need to do is see what happens to this particular um, equation when we go all the way to 14 because now remember copper 2 oxide coexists all the way up to pH 14, right? So there's no boundary here on the right side. And so what we find out is that the potential ends up being negative 0.08 for copper 2 oxide turning into copper 1 oxide. And that's going to fall somewhere down here. So we're going to erase that line and write where the boundary for the copper 2 and copper 1 oxide kind of takes place, you know, in terms of the line kind of skewing itself. From that point downwards, we go up to negative 0.08. All right, and we're almost done. Now we need to consider what happens to copper 2 oxide turning into copper 0. That equation will require the presence of protons because you have, okay, first of all, you have two coppers on the left side, so you need to have two coppers on the right side. But then you have one oxygen on the left side, so you need to add a water on the right side. That provides you with two protons on the right side, so you add two H pluses on the left side, and you need two electrons to balance the charges on both sides. So once again, the Nernst equation for this process will have H plus to the second power on the denominator. This involves two electrons, so the value of N is 2. If you bring the exponent in front of the log, 2 and 2 will cancel out. Uh, you'll end up with log of 1 over H plus, which is simply the pH. So ultimately, this equation simplifies to 0 0.16 minus 0 0.0592 times the pH. And once again, we plug in pH of 14 to figure out what the value is. And in this case, the value goes down to negative 0.67. So starting from the boundary of copper 1 to copper 0, we draw a line that goes down up to negative 0.67 with a pH, excuse me, with a slope of negative 0.0592. All right, so altogether, this represents the entire Pouvet diagram of copper. And it's a little bit more complicated because we have multiple species uh, changing in, um, in its identity depending on the pH. But as you can see, the process is still the same. You look at the horizontal boundaries, you look at the vertical boundaries, and you use the Nernst equation for non-standard conditions to determine the ultimate value of the potential. All right, so with this, we have finished the electrochemistry series and we have, in essence, finished um, the discussion of all the topics that we need to talk about in this class. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope, um, you know, you're seeing the full scope of what chemistry can do for us. You know, we can actually uh, take chemistry and utilize it to help out biology. We could use it and help out physics, material science, engineering, uh, and many other different fields in science so yeah chemistry is definitely very versatile and for, at least for me it will hold a special place in my heart all right so with that being said uh, the, the last thing I guess that I do want to mention is that if you think about the water stability you just have to like look at the graph and see where all these <clears throat> lines lined up and pretty much you have uh, the value right here uh, which is the boundary for your uh, point for potential <clears throat> and since so you're only going down to negative 0.67 technically speaking everything in here falls within the stability of water so everything here is stable in water but the copper as you know because it's actually technically metastable has a short lifespan in water all right so uh, this finishes the topic and as i said it's um it's kind of cool i think um it's kind of beautiful when you look at it in its full scope and hopefully you can appreciate that as well um so other than that i'll finish the video right here and um 
I'll see you in office hours. Bye-bye.